All right, Joe. So what you conjured up in your mind mm. leading up to this game versus what you saw on Saturday night. Similar script, a little different. I thought the Giants would lose. I didn't think they would get, you know, basically not show up for the game. I'll say that. You know, I mean, they got absolutely hammered. And um, I guess we probably shouldn't have been surprised because really the only game that, you know, was a, a normal game, if you will, uh, the one they played earlier in the year at the Meadowlands, they got absolutely whacked 48-22. I don't know how much, you, I don't know how much stock you could put in the game you know, the last game of the season, the Giants didn't play anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jalen Hurts, I don't think, was 100% for that game. But I, I thought the Giants would give him a game, and I certainly was wrong. Yeah, Joe, you know, how, how – I mean, I've been saying all, all morning how it is hard to play in Philly. It's just, it's just a different mm-hmm. animal. And the Giants missed an opportunity by not playing that Week 18 game with any kind of medal. Um, and it came back to haunt them because they felt unprepared, whether it was the mm-hmm. – the, the divisional round of the playoffs where the intensity is just greater. Just that that's an old cliche and it's true. Haven't been there a couple of times, but it also felt like, I don't know, like they were overwhelmed more so than I've ever felt. This team was overwhelmed. That first Philadelphia game in the Meadowlands, I, look, they made mistakes. Philly jumped on right, them quickly, right. right? This felt different. This felt like, you know, men versus boys, right? It just, it, it felt like dominance. Yeah, I you know what I I look at it now and I I think the Giants what, what we found out on Saturday night is how far the gap is and the Giants have had a tremendous year I mean mm-hmm. look I mean there's no no getting no denying what they did this year how far the gap is between them and Philly and probably even Dallas to be honest with you I mean they went 0 five against the two best teams in the division this year they only won one division game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's what you got to look at. I mean, going forward, if you're Brian Dable, if you're Joel Shane, I think that's what you got to sit down and look, okay, how do we close that gap on Philadelphia and even the Cowboys? Because, you know, in the division we're in, we got a long way to go. Yeah, you're not wrong, Joe. And uh, you mentioned Joe Shane. We're going to actually have Joe's press conference. We're going to carry it live. He and Dable are going to speak about the Giants. And uh, we'll do that at noon coming up here on The Fan. Now, this is going to be hard to answer fully because we don't know what they're going to do this mm-hmm. offseason. But based on the the expected pieces that we all think will return, the, the core, right? Do you expect now, again, it's an early read. I right, grant you that. Right. Uh, a step forward for the Giants next year or a step back for the Giants next year? Well, that's a good call. I don't know. That's a tough call. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, they really came out of nowhere this year. Like I mm-hmm. said, they're, they're, they're way behind in the division. I mean, you know, you, the two best teams in the division, the Giants got a long way to go. I mean, I know the Cowboys, look, Dak Prescott stunk yesterday. <laughs> And the Cowboys Ooh. made a ton of mistakes. I mean, the mistakes they made in that game, we, you know, we don't have time to break it all down. Yeah. But, um, you know, they got a long way to go to, to beat these teams in their division. And I, I don't know. That, the Giants are going to come into the year next year with expectations. You know, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the fan base now is looking at it saying, okay, you know, last year we would not, you know, it was a nice story. But like I said, we were kind of like the little engine that could. We probably got as far as we could go, probably went farther than we should expect that they went. Now, next year, you're going to have expectations going forward. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So I don't know. Uh, you, you know, I mean, would it, would I be shocked if the Giants took a step backwards next year? I, I wouldn't be. Yeah, where, where should Giants fans be thinking? Because, I mean, it's obviously it was a successful season, as you mentioned. Right. But, I, again, after this game, I wasn't, like, angry. I wasn't pissed off. I was more disappointed, I think, because I expected a competitive a, game. Yeah, at least. yeah. Or just right. a... Just a right. Like what I had seen for the last month, which was good yeah. execution, awareness of situations, making plays when they were presented to you. Instead, I got guys stumbling out of breaks. I got missed mm-hmm. tackles. I got I got everything that a bad team puts on tape, not what a good team, which I thought this team was. Well, look, I'll, I'll put it this way. If you're a Giant fan, here's what you got to look at. I got Number one, I got a real head coach here with Brian Dable. I don't think there's any question about it. Yes. And you think maybe Josh Allen misses Brian Dable up in Buffalo? <laughs> yes. I think, so I, I, I think that's number one that you got to look at. Number two, I think you finally got a franchise quarterback. I mean, for all the, you know, the this way and that way over the last three years, uh, you know, uh, before this year about Daniel Jones, I think you have to look at it and say, man, I think we got a real quarterback here. I don't now, think there's any now. Doubt some about people it. are worried, Joe, because of the, the. It was a horrible performance on his yeah, part. Yeah, okay. Not, but I mean, everybody and, stunk, and it wasn't all his fault, by no, the way. No. So it, it, some people are now stepping back from that thought process. I think I agree with you. I think Daniel is the guy for oh, the future. God. No question. 
Look, if, look, I'll tell you right now, if, they, if, they, if the Giants was stupid enough to let Daniel Jones go, I'd be screaming for my football team to go <laughs> sign him. Yes, no, I'm, I'm serious. Me too, Joe. Me I, too. I mean, where, where are they, if you're a Giant fan, where are you getting better right now than no. Daniel Jones at that position? No not. way. The only thing, and I, I would uh, who, never... Are you kidding me? No, no, I wouldn't subscribe to this. The only thought, if you want to reset Muddy's, and I'm not... I, Jones, I'm not saying that. But you want to take a couple of picks, move up, and maybe draft somebody in the first round, start over. Some you might be able to say, maybe say that. Otherwise, you're a thousand percent right. It's Jones's team. I, I think we all know that. Yeah. Joe, Joe what was your thought on uh, going for it on fourth and eight from Philly's forty? Uh, I didn't have a great problem with it. I mm. got to be honest with you. Uh, I think early in the game, I think Dable realized, hey, you know, we are winning this game. You know, we, we, we're not going to win this game. It's, we're in a little trouble here. This team went right down the field to score in that first series. We got to put some points on the board like now. So I had no problem with it. Uh, obviously, you know, it was a terrible breakdown by the offensive line. I mean, that's another thing, too. I mean, let, let's be real. Philly's got the best pass rush in the game. They had 70 sacks this past year. Like we mentioned it last week. They got four guys that had over 10 sacks. Um, you know, I had no problem with that. I really didn't. I, I thought I thought it was the right move. You're kind of in no man's land. You know, what are you going to do? You're not going to try a 60-yard field goal there. Uh, I, I had no issue with it. I really didn't. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I would have liked to have seen was something more aggressive defensively after that. Yeah. Right? They, they, again, they played a lot of zone. They let things just happen in front of them, and big plays result when you don't make tackles when you're playing zone. That's what it's always been about. I would have liked the wink to have been wink, like come after Jalen Hurts. Even even if he gets the ball away, right. just, just come after him. Make, right. It, right. make it uncomfortable. It, it never felt uncomfortable. No, no, they, they never did. I mean, it, like I said, it was it was terrible. I mean, let's be honest. This game, you could have shut the game off at the end of the first quarter. That's right. I mean, there was never a moment in this game, you know, 14 nothing, 21 nothing, 20. Never a moment in this game you thought the Giants had a chance to win. No, I mean, not, that, not wrong. That, that there's no question about. So that's our buddy Joe Beningo, of course. Joe, every Monday he's been with us here on the Fantiki and Tierney Show. Joe, before you bounce, I... I know you have to have at least a thought on the Jets OC search. You got to have something to say, right? Well, first of all, let me say this: I am thrilled that the Buffalo Bills got their rear end handed to them yesterday. Let me say that <laughs> nice. the overrated Bills, the cocky Sean McDermott, all of that. It was great seeing the Bengals just dominate them. No, that was a beautiful thing, and and also that Roger Goodell didn't get his play, his championship game yes. in a stupid dome in Atlanta. How good was that? And I know that was big motivation for the Bengals. God bless them with that. Yeah. As as far as the Jet OC is concerned, you know what, B? Look, I'd love to have a guy like Frank Reich. You're not getting him because mm-hmm. he's going to be looking at, you know, he, Sal will be looking over his shoulder at Frank Reich yep. as an offensive coordinator. I really don't care who they bring in. Just get it right. You know, and to me, it's more important. Get Who's my quarterback? You know, we can talk about the offensive coordinator until the cows come home. I, I, who the hell well, let's is get my you, quarterback? Let's, let's get you on record. Who do you want? Well, the guy I really want, look, look. I wouldn't mind having Aaron Rodgers. I wouldn't mind it. Okay. I mean, it, it depends how much am I giving up. He is 38 years old, and there's a short window there with him. Yep. So I'm not giving up multiple you know, first-round draft choices for him. Got it. So, Got but it. I'd be in with him. If That said, probably Derek Carr. And that, yeah. That's, that's those, probably those, who it's going to be. Yeah, and there's, those are two good choices. Aaron Rodgers, I think, gives you three years. Yeah, right? okay. You right. got to win, though. You yeah, know what, Tico? So. Tiki, if he comes here, we got to win a championship. No, right. We got to win the Super Bowl. It, it can't you know, be don't just... get me to the AFC title game and say, "Okay, that was great." No, no, no. We got to go all the way. If I got Aaron Rodgers, that's a good point. Like, yeah. if you, if and by the here... way, let me say this too. I don't want to jump on you, Tiki. If we get Aaron Rodgers, there's your offensive coordinator, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. Yep. You just got to hope he doesn't bring his quirkiness with him. Well, <laughs> he is, you know, he is a little of that. Yeah. Show up at his press conference, tripping out on shrooms, whatever he's taking these days. <laughs> shrooms laced with whatever the heck that thing is. <laughs> uh, whatever. I hear you. Joe, good chat, buddy. Uh, All right, guys. We'll talk to you, my man. All the love. Be, be good, well. Brother. Back to See you. you. Back to you, Joe. Of course, Joe B. You know, we talk about what the Giants might be next year. Of course, the NFC East uh, opponents playing the Packers mm-hmm. again, playing the Jets. We mentioned that. Playing the Pats, playing the Rams, playing Seattle again, playing that good Saints defense in the Dome. It's funny because, like, all those teams you talk about, oh, it's the, the, the schedule's going to be tougher. All those teams have serious question marks. Yes, but I all could, but they're but but now but, they but I'm all, not. But they all could like like be resolved 
to the positive. Well, the back end of that list, the Bills, playoff team, yeah. Miami, yeah. whether you like it or not, playoff team, yeah. San Francisco might win the Super well, Bowl. Well, I got to see two of those. The Raiders might have Tom Brady, the Saints, Steve. I mean, it's it's not easy. No, no. It's not, not easy. easy not but easy. There, there are question marks. Yeah, for sure. But they're not question marks like, yeah, I see this going the wrong way. It's like, I see this probably fixing itself. Yeah, yeah. Like with the Rams. I, I think, think Sean maybe McVay the Pats. figures out. The Pats, they probably hire a, a potent, or not even a potent, just a competent offensive coordinator yep. and all of a sudden they're back to the pats like mm-hmm. so it gets a little bit tricky with some of those question mark teams that the giants have to play next year all right 